Nico is the name, 50 years is the age, and the one is the program. My name is Sharon Chirua, and I welcome you back to today's edition of The One. Last week we featured the group head of marketing and customer experience, Lorraine Piri, who took time to unpack the One campaign, its goals, and she also indicated that there'll be a lot of exciting things to come. And indeed, that excitement is there, as today we're going to be featuring the leadership of the Nico group, Mr. Vizenga Kumwenda, who's the group managing director, talking about the journey so far and what to look forward to as we keep going. Ta easy is when you can seamlessly and securely bank on your WhatsApp. Just send hello to 0885-700-322. Then ta, ta, ta. Ay, ay, ay. Now that is what easy banking feels like. Bank easy with the new Easy Bank Reloaded 2.0. NBS Bank. You're carrying that. Welcome to the program, Mr. Gwenda. Thank you. Now, the Nico Group is celebrating 50 years of operations in Malawi and Zambia. Would you tell us what comprises of the group and what services does it offer? Uh, Nico uh, is a group of uh, companies that offers a diverse range of financial services. Uh, we offer general insurance, we offer life insurance, pensions administration, banking, um, asset management, uh, technology, infrastructure development and management, uh, just to mention a few. Uh, we have, as I said, we offer these services through our subsidiary companies. These subsidiary companies uh, are owned by NICO. In some instances, we own them 100%. In some instances, we own them in partnership with other uh, investors. And uh, because of the range of the financial services we offer, we call ourselves a one-stop shop for financial services. Now, it is known that the NICO group has delivered many firsts in the market. Would you share some of these firsts and just what they meant to the group? Yes. Um, <clears throat> Nico uh, was the first company to list on the Malawi Stock Exchange in 1996. Uh, that was at a time when the, uh, you know, the market never believed that we could have a stock exchange. But there we were. We took the courage to list. We did. Nico was the first company from Malawi to become what I call a truly multinational when we set up a company in Zambia, a general insurance company in 1997. Nico was also the first company to, to uh, set up a shopping mall, to build a shopping mall in Malawi, uh, the Chichiri Mall. We constructed that one and opened it for service in 2000. After that, we went on also to set up another one in Ilerongwe, uh, which I think was also the first there. And uh, since then, there has been a proliferation of shopping malls. And the, <coughs> um, Besides Nico, uh, the, the, the mother company, our, subsidiary, our subsidiaries too uh, have been pioneers in, in their own space. For example, NBS Bank was the first to introduce mobile banking through 322. They were also the first to, uh, to offer a local credit card on the market. A lot of people might hear all these options, banking, be the first on the Malawi Stock Exchange. They might say this might be too much. Was there ever a time you looked at these um, subsidiaries and the services they offered and you said, maybe this is just a bit much? Not really. I mean, uh, you see, any business, when you set up a business, you need to grow. Because if you can't grow, uh, you remain static, the next thing is uh, you're going to die. So you have to grow. Now, for us, uh, the issue was, what's the model for growth? And, the, you know, these subsidiary companies that we've set up, uh, they have their own management and um, independent boards uh, such that these subsidiary companies by and large they operate on their own. Um, uh, it's not me as group MD who run the bank for example, there is management for the bank, likewise for the rest of the companies. So you know that's the model and the, as long as you have competent people, you empower them, they'll be able to run these businesses. So in fact we're looking for more, we need to grow more, we need to set up more businesses. Over the years, how would you describe the performance of the Nico Group? 
Well, the performance of the Nico Group um, over the past five years, um, how do I want to put it? Uh, it hasn't been an easy journey, I must say. Um, you know, we, um, we've had, it's, it's been a journey of um, faith and resilience, I would want to call it. Uh, we've had, we, there have been times when some of our, our companies, you know, were going, went through some rough time to a point that we even doubted if we, they, would, they, would do, they would pull through and uh, still stay in existence. Uh, but I'm glad that, uh, um, you know, we are here now. Um, you know, we, we were tested, uh, but I'm glad we've grown from strength to strength. And um, especially the past five years um, uh, have been uh, the period when uh, Nico's uh, strength and stability were taken to test. Uh, I'm glad to say that uh, as we're sitting here today, uh, we've passed that test. And maybe uh, just to give you a demonstration um, uh, to support uh, what I'm saying that I believe we've passed that test, uh, I, need, I should just quote you some of the figures. Uh, we've had, we've enjoyed consistent uh, revenue growth from uh, just over 100 billion to uh, in 2016 to 185 billion uh, at the end of 2020. Um, in terms of profitability, um, uh, we profit before tax, we've grown from a profit before tax of 1.54 billion uh, in 2016 to uh, 26.5 billion at the end of 2020. After tax, we moved from a loss of 1.4 billion in 2016 to a profit after tax of 18.5 billion um, in, in, at the end of 2020. Um, our asset base has also grown in 2016 from just over 290 billion to, uh, at the end of 2020, uh, 701 billion MK. In fact, I, would want, uh, I don't think I would be wrong that uh, perhaps in terms of assets, we are the biggest group in Malawi. In terms of uh, equity, we've grown, uh, shareholder, uh, shareholder equity, we've grown from uh, just over 29 billion uh, in 2016 to um, uh, just over 72 billion at the end of uh, 2020. Uh, <coughs> in terms of uh, earnings per share, uh, we've grown from, in fact, I think negative 80 tambara per share uh, in, at the end of 2016 to um, 9 kwacha 60 tambara per share. In terms of dividend, <coughs> I'm glad to say that uh, we, are paying a div we paid a dividend of 40 tambara per share in 2016 uh, compared to a dividend of 2 kwacha 30 tambara at the end of uh, uh, 2020. So that's really the journey. Um, I think when we start, you know, uh, uh, you know, when we look back in 2016, to see that uh, you know we we have achieved these numbers, where as I've explained to you, um, I think uh, I can say it's been a successful journey. But as I've said, it hasn't been an easy journey. When one looks at the figures like this, they might think, oh, it's been plain sailing. It's been tough, but it's a reflection of uh, how strong we are as a group, uh, <clears throat> how strong we are as a group. And uh, I also should highlight that uh, part of our strength is derived from the diversity. I really would want to uh, inform our clients that uh, you know, when they're dealing with a Nico company, the Nico group, uh, that NBS Bank, Nico Life, and so on, they should be rest assured that they're dealing with a group that is sitting on a very, very strong foundation. Um, for us to be here after 50 years. There are so many entities that actually have died even before they take off. Uh, but when they're dealing with us, they should know that they're dealing with uh, a team, um, uh, a group of companies that is tried and tested. Now, Mr. Kumende, you've mentioned really impressive numbers in terms of the growth, and dividend payouts and the like, but we're now going into, going into 2020. The world over was hit by the COVID-19 pandemic and business was disrupted world mm -hmm. over as well. Mm -hmm. How would you describe um, how the pandemic affected the business in terms of performance? 
Well, Sharon, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, uh, took everyone uh, by surprise, such that the past 18 months uh, haven't been easy. Um, and we as a group have been affected just like others. Um, uh, specifically, uh, our clients um, have been affected uh, such that, for example, you find clients in the hotel industry, the, you know, the, the business went down and that meant that the, you know, they couldn't honor you know, their obligations for the services that are procuring for, from us. Yes, but uh, that regardless, I'm glad to say that uh, as NICO, we are still showing our resilience. Um, our our business um, because, uh, our business has uh, uh, managed to survive is surviving as we speak. Partly, you know, I want to mention that uh, the relevance of the services we provide perhaps is tested during time like this one, in the sense that our services, in fact, our clients are still patronising us because they need the services now, perhaps more than ever before. Uh, I need to mention to you that we've paid uh, COVID-related uh, death claims in excess of two billion, and this has made a big difference to our clients. So, um, yeah. So, but despite you know those you know huge outlays, we are still here. And I also want to highlight that uh, during this time, we've maintained our staff complement. No one has lost their job in the Nico Group. Uh, you may be aware that companies have been closing out there. Yes, so um, it's again another uh, reflection of you know, how strong we are uh, as a group. Um, yes, we know that uh, you know, we're now into the third phase now. Um, and we've asked ourselves to say, look, how do we, you know, how do we cope with this situation? I must say that, you know, we have, we, we, we had to uh, look at how we service our clients to ensure that uh, our clients are safe, our, our, our members of staff who are providing services are also safe. And that has, uh, we've had to look at the modalities uh, of you know, offering services. We've promoted, for example, online platforms, you know, so that we reduce, uh, we reduce uh, um, you know, the contacts uh, between stakeholders. Um, I should also mention we've had to support our staff. Um, and the, um, uh, you know, where we don't have a choice, but to, to you know, to, where we don't have a choice, but to, uh, for our staff, instead of working remotely, for example, they still have to come to the office. We have to decongest. We have to, 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 yeah, to, you know, fumigate, so that we create a safe environment. Now, all those things uh, have brought costs on us, um, you know. But that, regardless, um, you know, we are here, and uh, we believe we will stand up to the challenge. Mm. Most companies have been involved in corporate social investments in light of the, the pandemic. What similar projects has the group embarked on over the last 18 months? Um, Sharon, I would want to highlight the fact that uh, Nico has been a good corporate citizen um, you know, for all these years since we were set up uh, uh, 50 years ago. And the, um, we, you know, work, we, we would want the communities uh, where we're operating uh, to appreciate the, you know, of having um, a citizen as, as NICO. And the, in that regard, we've been assisting our communities, especially trying to help the underprivileged. And the, we, uh, we work, you know, in the space of education, health, and the, uh, sustaining the environment. Specifically, in terms of how we have played our role during this COVID-19 pandemic, um, I'm glad to uh, inform you that uh, uh, we've spent over 200 million kwacha uh, uh, assisting government with the, the COVID-19 response interventions. Um, we, some of the, our interventions are actually fairly long term in the sense that uh, we are working in partnership with government uh, to build classroom blocks uh, um, 
for schools, some of the um, highly con uh, congested schools um, uh, in the country. Uh, the objective there is that we want to decongest, to help the schools decongest. Uh, that's why we're putting up these uh, classroom blocks. And, the, you know, through our subsidiary companies also, we're supporting um, institutions of higher learning uh, where, because of the COVID-19, they've had to resort to uh, online learning. Now, the challenge with that is that students are expected to have gadgets that they should use, you know, for, you know, for this online learning. And then you have, you know, these, you have some underprivileged students that can't afford. And, uh, you know, Nikolai, for example, is working with some of the institutions where they've spent uh, an estimated 14 million kwacha to help students, uh, you know, uh, learn during this uh, uh, difficult time. And lastly, our audience would like to know, what are the big dreams for the group? Where to from here? Yeah, the way I look at the big dream for the group <coughs> uh, basically uh, is, um, you know, what it is we have for our clients. Um, so, uh, for me, first and foremost, I would want the group to be the go-to uh, service provider uh, for all the core services that we are providing. So, for example, uh, life insurance, uh, we would want uh, Nico Life to be the go-to uh, when you know, our, customers, our customers are looking for life insurance. The same should apply to general insurance, banking, asset management, and so on. Um, and the, this basically means that you know, I would want Nico to be a trusted partner for our clients. Now, for, for this to happen, it means we have to continue and maybe even increase uh, investment in our people, in our staff. We need to increase investment in technology so that we're able to offer um, affordable, relevant um, uh, services uh, that, uh, when consumed, they give our customers a uh, great experience for them uh, to keep coming back. Um, and the, looking at the clients, uh, I would also want to mention that uh, we would want to give special attention to the retail sector um, so that as many people uh, as possible out there you know, are able to enjoy uh, financial services. And the, uh, added to that, uh, also focus will be uh, to women and the youth that are perhaps the biggest uh, 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 proportion of our population, but you find that they're also perhaps the most marginalized in as far as um, enjoying financial services is concerned. Um, I would also want to point out that uh, I would want us to maintain our pioneering, pioneering spirit because that's the spirit that has brought us where we are today. And that will continue. And this time around, <clears throat> we are looking to um, <clears throat> um, servicing the um, public sector, especially in the infra infrastructure uh, development and services sector. That's where we believe <coughs> we, you know, we should, uh, that should be our avenue uh, for continuing with this spirit, but also for contributing to the development of this country. Now, great vision, great big dream, and so much that you've shared with us on this program today. Thank you so much, Mr. Vizinga Gumenda, for joining us on The One. No, you're welcome, and uh, it's been a pleasure. Yes. Thank you. That was Mr. Vizenge Gumenda, the Nico Group's Group Managing Director, unpacking what the group has to offer you and even generations to come. Do stay right there. I need to be the band. If we went on the many nomination team in the group, the many of us have been in the group nineteen. And the many who go naga banga jimu chodi ine muanga cinema yawa naga banga assisti game ya Mozambique ndi Malawi. Kwa ine ufu ufu jitu ano. Zina ngani bitu sebinga njira ufu uwa ine yo dukseo la netpo yangu ni maiko ndi sesa bambiri yangu ina dipanga sauti ni kai mire ziko langa maiko agunja ochu. Zina langa ndi Shireen, 
Ndi maimba nyimbo za gospel. Ndine wachi mwemi jifuwa ndi ndi ufulu o gritsa nchito lusolanga po masuri la maganizo anga. To our valued pension fund members, Nico Pension would like to advise how you can go about accessing your pension benefits when needed before retirement. For employees who have changed jobs, you may write your former employer advising them that you have changed jobs. In order to transfer your pension benefits to your new employer's pension scheme, here are the documents needed. A letter stating current employer and their pension administrator, a national ID, and a duly signed and stamped withdrawal form. Once this information is presented to Nico Pension, we will proceed to transfer your benefits from old employer's pension scheme to new employer's pension scheme. For employees that have left employment and are unemployed for more than six months, we will require the following documentation before we proceed to calculate pension benefits. A letter from member advising the reason for claim and adherence to waiting period. A claim withdrawal form from the former employer signed and stamped. Copy of national ID. Copy of bank deposit slip or bank statement. If the total member contributions plus the bonus are above 500,000 kwacha, the claim will be sent to Reserve Bank of Malawi for approval before payout. The remaining employer contributions plus the bonus will remain in the member's account up until the member reaches the retirement age of 50 or transferred to another employer when the member gets employment before age 50. If both the members and the employer's contributions plus the bonus are less than 500,000 kwacha, the member may access the whole amount. This is in line with Section 65 of Pension Act 2010. Nico, it's possible. More exciting things to come as next week we're going to be featuring one of the managers of the Nico Group, Mr. Daniel Dunga. He is the Nico Asset Manager's Chief Investment Officer and also chairs the Synergies Task Force for the One Nico Project. Now, Mr. Dunga is going to be here to explain this project and as well as how it relates to the companies within the group. Commerce, to be the chance of game, it means to be short cash or box. Is this is a point? Indeed, you don't want to miss any of that. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same place. Follow us on all the pages that are popping up on your screen. You've been with me, Sharon Chira, and my co-host Rebecca Kadzaeka. Now, from the one team, this is good night.